So hello, how are hey. you doing? How's it going? Uh, good. Uh, everybody, this is Hikari, and also uh, you have a YouTube channel, which you can tell us about. Yeah, um, I run Spectrum DIY YouTube and uh, TikTok. Like I do do quite a quite a bit of social media. That I I wish. I had a little list sometimes because it's hard to keep track. Yeah. I will um, put links to your stuff uh, in the the YouTube description and the podcast description so people can check you out. Um, and if there's anything besides your TikTok and YouTube that you want linked to, just send it to me and I'll add it. Believe it or not, I think all of our social stuff is on our website, actually, which is okay. spectrumdoneyy.com. So, like... I have a little section where it's all of our link stuff. And then I have um, actually other content creators that I support and things like that on there. Okay, cool. So the last thing I saw uh, you doing was uh, the rugs. I saw some yeah. videos of the rugs. Are you still doing that? Um, the last one we made was the Nightmare Before Christmas rug. I designed that one over in Photoshop because I didn't find one online that I liked. So I designed one on Photoshop and made, I don't know how well you can actually see that, but I did the Nightmare Before Christmas rug for 30th wow. anniversary. So. That's really cool. I like how it turned out. Yeah. How long did that take you? Uh, <laughs> it, I think it took about nine hours total or something about like that. It, I did it across multiple live streams so that I could like make a time lapse of it. So. Okay we we have a video of it get made but i don't remember i think it was two hours for the first session which got the like projection the coloring the outline and a lot of like the black lines filled in that took about two hours and then the next live stream was two hours and 40 minutes and i finished it and then about 20 minutes to glue it up and then about an hour to put the backing on and then about three hours to trim it, I think, or something like that. Okay. Or four. Wow. Is that what, like, when you're made for yourself, or are you going to sell it? It's for sale, but it hasn't sold yet. So we're kind of, as to continue making rugs, it's going to be kind of a, we're going to have to do the next one on commission so that we, because we only got one cloth left. And we get one big cloth and then cut it in half and it fits our frame. So I could do one more cloth, but if it's not guaranteed to sell, then we'd hit us like a stone wall and we couldn't reinvest. And so right now we're kind of either waiting on a commission, which there is interest in a commission and, or one of the ones we have left to sell. Cause we also did, there's a pickle Rick. That's sitting right there in the shadow. <laughs> I love that with the expression and everything. He's like, Pickle Rick. <laughs> so there's, there's also the Pickle Rick. And Sweet. we did a, I know it's dark in here, but sensory stuff. But I also did like a pumpkin rug. So we have those three left. I want to do another one though. I just <laughs> got to wait for that. <laughs> I met that. Like, so I started. Like I started making stickers and I was like doing art and then it turned into me making jewelry. And I'm at that point where I'm starting to do like um, custom order uh, and on Etsy instead of making stuff because I can't store it all. Plus I don't want to use the materials for stuff that's not gonna sell. You know, I just don't get that, that many sales. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna show you guys what I can do. And then if you like that, I'll, I'll make it when we you tell me you want it really relate to that last bit about <laughs> the material not selling um it's it comes it comes in waves for our business um we primarily that's been our sole income since well <laughs> not to get heavy with it because i don't want to go that far into it but um i'll my disability was taken away back in April. And so our sole income has been my business from April till now. And it comes in waves, you know, there's months where it's like, Hey, cool, man, made ends meet. And then it's like some months you kind of like, Oh, this is, yeah. But we, we make all of ours in house because it actually started with 
actually it started with disability becoming under jeopardy i realized like oh wait this could get taken away from me and i can't afford to have zero income at all um especially with my medication if i were to not have access to it that's not a good thing so um i was like i know what can i do i need to go to TikTok and ask my people because i'm a maker you know I, I do tons of maker content all the time they told me well have you ever tried making stickers before because being ADHD, i have the the tism side satisfied doing the same thing every day it's print laminate cut but then the the ADHD side, I get to do new designs and new this all the time. And I was like, no, I've never tried that. Let me try it. And now we have 183 designs in the shop and <laughs> we've branched into nonstick stickable sticker books and notepads and rugs. Rugs came from that I was a crocheter and I had a lot of yarn and I needed to do something with it. And I was like, one of my friends is also a maker makes carpet casey van arsdale he does he he started tufting earlier this year and i've watched him a couple of times I'm like i need to do that that's that's what i need to do so i started doing that. <laughs> was that like a like did it become like a hyper fixation thing because you saw it and you got excited about it and you were like mm, i need to i need i need <laughs> and the very first rug i made was the pickle rig and then i made like this portal rug and then a bunch of paw prints and it just makes i've done nine rugs that's it nine of them in fact the ninth one is the nightmare before christmas rug and i i don't know if i'm gonna keep doing it it's fun i might keep doing it it is a lot of work you know it's like physically demanding because you're having to mixture of sit if it's low down or stand up sometimes kind of like gotta get up yeah. there. but it's it's worth it because when it does sell you can make like quite a bit more material so it's not really going to make you money but it'll let you the more you sell the more you can make so yeah we chase that it, dopamine trail trying to keep stuff being made. <laughs> yeah trying to sustain the sustain the hobby i definitely i definitely relate to that like i i haven't really like I started my shop like over a year ago and I think I've gotten like 200 sales. So that's good, but it's not like great. Um, it's not enough to pay for itself, but yeah. it's like, I feel like I'm just slowly slow-mo building and I'm going to start expanding into, um, I'm going to go to like flea markets and stuff like that and see if, because the tables are not as expensive as like crafts fair tables. Cause they're like 250 for a, a weekend here um i can't i can't do that but but like it's like 25 to 50 bucks for a flea market which is you know yeah, i can do that that's more reasonable have you tried other platforms of advertisement like um instagram and i know i'm not i'm actually struggling with tiktok right now because since they've pushed out the tiktok shop they've actually started putting a paywall between actual makers and their shop and i'm i've noticed that okay for the three my friend casey's got three million followers and mm -hmm. that's just one of his accounts he, he's got multiple videos that didn't break ten thousand views wow oh, that's uh all right i need to <laughs> You're totally fine. <laughs> I accidentally his, his toy up and it went where he can't get to it. So he's trying to figure out where to, how to get to it. And it's like all my crafting stuff. So he would just knock it down. It'd be awful. Um, yeah, I, so I made it, so I have a TikTok account that's, that's dedicated to my crafting stuff. And right now, because I'm in between house housing, I haven't been crafting, but I want, I don't even have enough followers to do lives yet, but I want to be able to do lives and show people what I'm working on. Um, and then uh, I I do post on Instagram. I like I set up the Facebook shop, whatever, so I can link to link to my shop through that. And then I also post on um, X, and you know, but like I think 
it just gets suppressed everywhere. Like it's so like, it's so, you know, so frustrating. Content suppression started earlier this year. Um, I don't exactly know how to dig into it and find exactly when, but I noticed a huge uptick in content suppression from the time that TikTok was taken to court. And I can't prove it, but it the correlation between TikTok's case against TikTok and them gaining control over US servers and censorship feel like they go hand in hand because my content went from, I was reaching my own following, which I, I think I'm at 13,300 right now. It went from, I would get a 1200 views, which is 10%. That's the gold show social standard, right? That's the normal range. It's gotten to where I'm in the two to 300 range or 400 views. And I'm going, it's not that people don't like the content because if you watch the analytics, there's a graph that shows you how far into the video somebody scrolls away. And on average, 30 seconds is the attention span of anybody on social media across the board. That's just the general average. Um, so believe it or not, the most vital part of your video is the first three seconds. If they do not stick around for the first three seconds, the rest of the video is going to not be so good in performance wise because what's going to happen is um the uh, people are rapid scrolling nowadays and if you don't catch them in the first few frames even um then they're not going to stick around to see what's in the video and once they're watching the video nine out of ten times either hey i like this or it's engaging or i've had people say refreshing as a comment um but you got to get past those first like few frames all the way to the first three seconds and that's that's a huge like demand because okay with a diy video if you don't start the video with say you're already into a sentence i've noticed that the performance will be significantly lower um another thing i've noticed is like with my sticker videos if i just show a sticker nothing really happens if i slap the sticker down on the desk I seem to get four seconds <laughs> worth of viewage. And I'm like, wow, why does slapping that? Because it's a noise and there's a lot of motion and people are trying to eyeball what's happening. Yeah. And then they go, okay, I'm interested in this video. So then the next seven seconds need to be engaging. And then after that can be info dump. And it's that's taken me two years of trial and error to figure out how to get past that barrier of being seen and the more people watch that video the further the algorithm rewards it they're like oh people really like this let's push it a little further and yeah. that it's just really hard to make a solid three minute of engagement so yeah it's, it's, <laughs> i like i like making stuff for youtube more even if not that many people see it because i don't feel the pressure that tiktok creates like i you know like tiktok makes yeah. me feel like i have to be say i can't i cannot put words together to be succinct it is not i am very like do, 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 all yeah. over right and so like i started making like these um rv noob videos about my experience of getting an rv literally being like i have no idea what i'm doing you guys can watch me and either laugh at me or or commiserate with me and um and i've been enjoying that and it it would not work on tiktok like people yeah just don't you know it's just it just doesn't but like my my con like the content for my shop like i try to make like anything with jewelry it's like less than six seconds videos they're very like quick and to the point and but my issue across all of my accounts is that they're not showing my stuff to my followers so yeah. that i don't get engagement because it's not the right people and i'm like you know i i consistently i'm at like three three to five percent of my followers on the the clown account and it's always been that way i didn't have any growth for a year and the only way i started getting growth was when i started doing support for support so i go to other people's accounts and it brings them back um and i got a few hundred followers from that but it's been like all of my friends like look at my account they're like 
you're doing all the right things, but it's just like, like I'm in this weird, like I, I got put in the wrong spot on the algorithm to start with. And I've just been there and I found out that this is something that takes a lot of energy. And so of course I'm not suggesting it as like an end all be all solution, but something that I've noticed is if, uh, if you have a brand new account, those first three videos do really do, well. Yeah. So this was a piece of advice given to me by Casey Van Arsdale. Again, this, I, I, I listen to people who have big accounts because I'm like, you know, you've got a million six on YouTube. He's got four million on one account and three million on another account. So obviously he's done something right. And his his best advice was make a new account take your best performing video of the old account and put it on the new one and just see what it does. And then if you have to rinse and repeat it until you get somewhere with that first video and then do a second video and see how it does. And I've done that a couple of times, but I get so nervous because it's, it's a slow game and not a, it's a long game. It's not the short game. It's not quick, but I have like, considered my best video was like 218,000. I considered making a new account and dropping that video to that account and just leaving what it happens. all what, what happens. What's the, what's, what do you get from doing that besides just seeing what the performance is? Because, okay, if you are able to get an account authority, which is something that is not talked about very much in, in public spaces, believe it or not. But account authority is the algorithm knows people like your stuff. And so you're ranked higher on being pushed out automatically. Um, you have to gain that. So they give brand new accounts a really strong fighting chance. And then it's up to them to, to, and to know the rules automatically. Somehow, magically, they're not written down, but you have to know your very first video is your strongest chance of getting viral. So, okay, if I took my 218,000 view video and I hit it on my main account and then made a new account and put that video of 218,000, there's a chance that it will exceed 218,000. If I can ever get it to go viral, my next one was 204,000, 207,000. That's the wax making video put that one on there and see how it does. And the account authority will go, oh, well, they really like that first one. So they're really gonna like the next one. They mm -hmm. really like the next one and it, it keeps it going. And my account did that. My very first video got like 43,000 because I deleted all the ones prior to it. And my account authority on my main account is so bad right now that I've been stagnant for months and I, just don't know how it happened it just happened so it's yeah wow. I, don't, I think yeah. i've always had i think it's always been bad for me like i've never had i had a video the best i've gotten was like ten thousand, and i think that's happened twice in like two years that's it so you um, could make a new account and take those two ten thousand videos and put them on there and go from there and see what it does it just yeah. hasn't experiment even if nothing else because what have you lost right Right. A couple, like two minutes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the, I, so I made a post for my, my GoFundMe and I was like, it's, it's not going to do well on TikTok. It's just, you know, just the nature of TikTok. But I got, um, a hundred shares. Like it was shared a hundred times. People were tagging people and reposting and doing all the stuff. It only got, uh, 600 views. That's it. That's, that's how my, th that's how my account is treated. Like it's crazy. Um, well, let me tell you right now that I can assure you, and this this is coming from everybody I've talked to, it's not you. It's genuinely the software. It is not you. If it if it were you, you wouldn't have any followers at all. Okay. Yeah. People don't follow people they don't like, but it's you're not getting seen because the algorithm isn't pushing your content. It's not pushing again, if you made a brand new account and took your best videos that you like or the ones that are performing the best and put them on that new account, watch it just take off. And yeah. if it doesn't, 
it would be surprising actually, because again, those first three videos of a brand new account have account authority. To maintain account authority, you almost have to daisy chain your videos. So you wanna wait till there's some comments that you can respond to keep it in a chain. So if you ever notice like, okay, how there, there's main videos and puller videos. Let me give you an example. The main most video I made recently was making DIY wax steel wax from scratch. It got 16,900 views. And then I responded to a comment with a test video. It got 6,500. I responded with a comment and a comment. And I've got four, eight, nine, 10, 11. There's about 11 puller videos that all tie back to that main video. And so when somebody sees it, they'll click on the see comment and it'll take them to the next one. And when you chain videos together, not only does it help the first one, the original, whichever one is considered the new video, which is you post it, it's not a response, it's not a stitch or a duet. Um, it's just an original video. From there, you can chain it as long as you have people commenting. And the more comments you get and the more you chain it together, all of them get helped. So like every video in the chain gets seen more and that helps account authority a lot. So. All right, if I were going to make a me make a brand new account, I would start with um, maybe making it my crayon video. If I didn't want to go the if I didn't want to be public about being trans on a brand new account, which unfortunately it's being suppressed LGBT related across the board. But if I kept it strictly maker, I could start with my original wax seal video that had like the 200 something thousand when somebody comments something useful. I could respond with the making it from scratch. And when they respond how to test it, I could drop the test video and the yada yada. And I could just keep building the chain off of that and create a wax making channel just for the sake of like testing that out. And I guarantee it may not do as good as the original account if I use the original hashtags and whatnot, because the algorithm's gonna go, wait, there's another video exactly it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't like the the redundancy at all. No, it doesn't because I've got a backup account that has duplicated videos on it. I posted a notepad video on my backup account. Organically, it got 1500 views. My main account, it only got 414. And that's because the main account isn't the one that originally posted it. It was my yeah. backup. So I, I've <laughs> Played with the numbers and tested things out. And what I found works best is daisy chaining videos to one video that's important. I and need if, comments then because I don't, I get, I get hearts. You can, people. You, can you can message people say, hey, can you leave a comment like this on my video so I can respond to it? Why not? I mean, yeah. show, <laughs> I mean we, all, we all have to do that if we're going to get that special comment like sometimes i'll get on my discord and say hey one of my mods go and write this comment um and so i'm looking for one now just to give an example but i don't see one readily my, but I'm my friend that um i do podcasting with um we were just talking about this the other day and she was like you know what you really need is you need some hate like people love that because i don't get any like negative like interactions for people at all occasionally people will say i'm scared of clowns but you're not that bad that's about as bad as it gets right um so and i was like but i don't i don't get that kind of stuff at all and she's like well we're gonna have to like figure that out because that brings people in i'm like oh man i don't like drama <laughs> <laughs> I would much prefer to have like interest, like be able to if someone had a question about how something was made or I that would be more like my what I would enjoy answering. I think the reason drama is always so popular is because it puts people in perspective of how their own life is doing. Like when I see a somebody having some drama going on, I'm watching that going, "Wow, I guess my situation's not quite that." <laughs> 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 I mean, I've noticed that my emotional videos unfortunately get more views than the ones that actually matter like yeah why well, every time I, I see one of your emotional videos I just think you're really brave to be able to share 
to be so open, you know, because I'm still I'm still learning how to feel my feelings and to stay present in them. And so expressing them is not I haven't gotten to that part yet. It's very I feel so guilty the moment I'm recording it. And I'm, I feel guilty when I post it. And I'm just like, yeah, but somebody out there is going to see that even as much as like, okay, I have a lot of content in between emotional videos. So people may not realize like, I'm still very feeling. I'm a very strongly emotional person. I still try to do my best every day, but it's like, okay, my, the situation that I'm in is very hard to deal with. It's how can I not heavy it? How can I, not? I I'm a trans person in the South. That's that's simple as it gets. The the complicated side of things it goes into my sole income is my business. And right now, my last real set of sales was on the eighth and ninth of this month. And so, yeah, yeah it's there's lots of stress and lots of <laughs> I I yeah I, yeah I'm not um I'm very like like here on the podcast I just share everything so. Um, but I don't, you know, like whatever you're not comfortable sharing, obviously don't, but like, um, I love like depth. You want me to, to draw the line at because where I'm at is heavy duty sometimes for people. And I've noticed that depending on what I say, people tend to sag under the weight of what I deal with. And I don't know if it's that it really is that rough here. Or maybe I I don't know. Maybe I'm not processing all of it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I I have that. I I've had one of those lives where like my therapists are like, I'm not not real sure how you're functioning. Like you know, and I don't share a lot. And when I and when I do, I tend to get really big reactions from people that. I think I'm very sensitive to it. So it almost like becomes like a feedback loop where I'm feeling my weight and then they are reflecting the weight back at me. And then I, I feel it more and then I feel very self-conscious and like, Oh, I shouldn't have put that out there because I'm being contagious with it. And, you know, and I, I, I've been trying cause I, the situation I'm in right now has been sustained severe stress for like months on end because of my housing situation and I have gotten to the point that I'm like, I, I feel like I'm fraying. And so I have started being a little more open and being like, I'm having a bad day. I can't get out of bed, like whatever. And then I feel so much guilt that I put that out there. But, you know, it's like, that's my reality. And um, I just, I need to be able to, I can't sit in it the way that I do some of my other stresses because there's so much of it. It's just like seeping out, right? Like, yeah. I, I I felt that um, I actually have multiple times. I made a video asking for food a few weeks ago because we were in need of food. And I once I got the help I needed, I hid the video because I didn't want people to keep giving me help when I had got groceries. Yeah. And then the same thing happened to my medication. I my medication doubled in price, and so I had to ask for the internet. For help and it, that both of those things are extremely embarrassing to me because it's like I, I feel inadequate but i also know that there's plenty of people out there that's like am i the only one that's sitting here suffering like this no um no you're not there's yeah. there's a lot of people suffering and you don't even have to be like in my type of situation to have that struggle um yeah yeah, it being able to relate is important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, asking, so you know, it's hard. Asking for help is like I doing the GoFundMe was like it's one of the hardest things that I've done because I always manage to scrape things together myself. And I did do GoFundMe after I first got sick because I was on the cusp of losing my house and it didn't go well. Um, and that also created like this, I don't want to ask for help again because it feels like people don't think I deserve it kind of thing. And so I finally, I had three different people be like, you need to do a GoFundMe because basically I got, I got an RV. I used what I had left in money to get 
a place that I could stay. And um, it's just, it's like by the time I got it, it's like the batteries died in it for the solar. The suspension catastrophically failed. Like, so the batteries are like 4.5K. The, the, the suspension fix, which is being done now, is 7.2K. I don't have the money. Like, but I can't, it has to be fixed in order to live in it. Right. And I just was like, I, you know, what am I going to, so people are like, do a GoFundMe. And I'm like, I don't want to. And when I posted it, like, I literally felt like I was going to throw up for the rest of the day. I just was like, so stressed. I felt so guilty and people just, I have been getting donations, which is like amazing, but I have to constantly fight that, the guilt and the shame that comes with it. You are worthy of help. First and foremost. In case anybody hasn't told you that you are worthy of help period um i can relate to how hard that is i started a gofundme to try to get us to safety i have not promoted it because i feel guilty that it's there the last yeah. video made was quite some time ago and they never actually crossed a thousand it got attention and i'm just like i just you know I, i'm I don't feel right about asking for help to get to safety when like I've got my friend Allie who's in Florida and it's I don't know how much worse it is for them because I'm in Mississippi and it's really bad here like the biggest fear is we can't go out in public without putting on this mask and cosplay to pretend like we're somebody we're not which is that's very hard to do. Like right now, yeah. if I wanted to check my mail, I would have to change clothes just to check my mail. Um, because then we we're already in a place that sounds not okay. You can hear auditory stuff within range of the house on a pretty daily basis here, and I don't know how to compare that to say where my friend Allie's living, where they're in Florida, and you know, so our situation, like. I can relate to how hard it is to ask for help because you're like, well, there's plenty of other people who who deserve it more, but there is that's not the right. This took me months to realize everybody deserves help. It's not all going to come from the same place. Just because somebody else needs maybe more assistance or less assistance doesn't mean you need anything less than what you need. So, yeah, I've I put the go fund me up and i think we made it to like one fifth of our goal maybe and, and then it stopped and then mm -hmm. i didn't push it anymore and i thought about making another video even but i'm like i just until my disability case is reviewed and either either denied or appealed or whatever I don't feel right because I can't get to safety anyway. Even if they, even if I met met my goal, they're not going to let me buy a house without a proof of income, which I don't have because my disability was taken. So, yeah, I st I, I feel guilty asking for help, but then again, we had to ask for food and medication so far this month, and I feel like you know. I deserve my basic human rights, my basic needs met. I don't necessarily deserve to have like nice extra stuff, maybe. Yeah. But, you know, like medication, water, um, food. Somebody donated us a really nice water filter that actually does work. And we've been able to filter our water now. It's like one of those emergency, like, this stuff is not safe for anything at all kind of filters and we've managed to make our water safe enough to drink because well buying water is expensive and yeah it well, is if we don't sell stickers we <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, yeah no i yeah i i mean i'm in the san francisco bay area which you know as you probably are aware the cost of living here is i and i'm the place in the country yeah, I'm on disability, which um, my disability payment isn't enough to get low, like low income housing is significantly more than my disability. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. Section 8, they don't, they don't, um, they haven't been, most places haven't been accepting applications for what is a lottery system in over five years. So it's, and it takes up to a decade to even, once you've applied to even get it. 
So like yeah. I did sign up like in a county that's not the county I'm in. I just went, oh, I'm going to found find an open one and sign up, but there's no guarantee I'll ever get that. So I can't even bank on that. And it was like when my housing stuff imploded, I was like, what am I going to do? And even going into the RV, I will not be paying rent because I couldn't afford to pay for a spot. But my my disability literally just covers if I have no extra expenses, including like getting going to the dentist or oil changes, that's it. I'm breaking even. And it's it's crazy. I'm just like, you know, like and it's so many people are in situations like both of us where like there's just, you know, we're just scraping by. And what kills me is then you just talking about money, my brain. I know there's enough money in this country for everyone to be able to to have their needs met. Yeah, that's the part that that really hurts because, like, what do we need two trillion dollars spent on everyone around the world instead of the people that are in this country that work every day to try to make this country a better place? And you know, I, it just I hope 2024 is a better year. <laughs> Yeah, they're keep hoping that like every year. <laughs> well, I'm I'm thinking more it's because it's a voting year, and I feel like the way things are going, maybe we ought to have yearly votes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sometimes it's like we have to wait how many years to potentially change this. <laughs> right. And they always pull the excuse of, well, it takes time for change to take it. I'm like, I've been waiting on change for 30 years, my dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I see the government as a fixed system and the politicians, once they get high enough for bobbleheads to distract us, it's, we can't actually change the system without dismantling it. I just, I am way too skeptical to, to believe that, we, you know, you feel that. I wish I didn't feel that, but I do because, okay, whenever I talk about politics with people, the first thing I remind them is like, just know that it's the government versus the people. It's not, it's not Democrat versus Republican. It's the government versus people. You, they right. give you the illusion of choice because it keeps you placated. Complacent. Yeah, and, and humans love their labels and their teams and their, you know, their nationalism and all these things that are just distractions from the real issues. Yeah. Especially like, okay, this, this actually, I wanted to call them out and make a video, but she's turned off her comments and tags on TikTok. She did Oprah. She, Oprah turned off her comments and tags because she made a video with Dwayne Johnson asking people for help for Maui. Mm -hmm. She's a billionaire. And Dwayne Johnson's a multi-millionaire. They could have seen either one of them could have rebuilt Maui out of the change from their couch cushion right. while having a house in Maui. Like Oprah's vacation home in Maui is huge and it didn't get affected by any of the burning and stuff. And they had the audacity to ask the public for money. And I'm like, um, excuse me, you're a billionaire. That's a thousand, that's a thousand millions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she she could get a nice tax write off and not even notice that the money was gone. That's like, it. She could literally repair all of Maui by herself and never even notice that it cost her anything. And I'm going, and you have the nerve to ask the United States people for money. Do you know the average American is considered in poverty below eighty thousand dollars a year? I make this year average i'm gonna make about seven thousand dollars this year yeah what if poverty is below eighty thousand what does that make me <laughs> right yeah i'm and i'm i'm like rolling over here with 19 so you know <laughs> that's you know i that's, like that's damn i've never made eight nineteen thousand in a year i think my best year i've ever had was when I was working go to IT. I made twelve thousand that year. Wow. I was really proud of that. 
I think my average over since I started working, if you average my yearly, it's about 90. So I've kind of just been living in California at that amount. Um, but I had like a couple jobs that paid more. And then, you know, and during the like I had a job where I was making making 50, but it, and I bought a house like that's the first thing I did was I bought a house because that was when the market was low enough to do that. So I used the money to make more money. Um, and yeah, like I, I felt like extremely lucky that I was able to do that, but I, you know, that, that was only like five years that I made that amount. And I was working with people being paid twice that, and they were renting and complaining about not having enough money. And I was like, why? Well, I, I just bought a house. I don't know what you guys are spending your money on, but, uh, <laughs> it, it, the way we're looking at it, the, the places we've been researching it, in houses, if I made 19,000 a year, it would take me two years to pay for a house at the housing range we're looking at right now. Cause most of the houses we're looking at are about 40 to 50,000. Yeah. Um, if I were able to get my disability income back, which it's was supplemental security income because they told me I didn't work long enough to get disability. I'm autistic. CPTSD. I have a GSW to my leg, and they said I wasn't disabled. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Really? So, um, I only had supplemental security income, and I still, at this point, again, they took that from me. So, I don't have any income at all except for Spectrum DIY, which again is, well, it's not doing so great. And I don't, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's definitely been since social media this year has changed in a way um, where people are, okay, my problem with TikTok shop is that people buy stuff from Amazon and then double the price and put it on TikTok shop. And I'm like, um, I hand make everything I'm selling and I want to know why it is that you're blocking my content as a as a literal maker of this stuff, but you will let these people who just resell stuff that's from some other place get millions of views. Like this, let me show you this thing. This is one of those fidget games. Mm -hmm. I, it's called a quick push game. I got it off of Amazon for eight dollars, and I saw it. Keep, I saw it multiple times go viral on TikTok and people were selling it for $25. And I'm like, y'all didn't make this. It was made in China in a sweatshop somewhere. And you, you're trying to make money off of, wow, okay. What happened? What about the rugs that I hand make? Or what about the right. notebook that I have, like, or the sticker books or the whatevers? And it's frustrating because like okay you put out original content i put out original content we have maker friends that put out original content we're all making stuff we're all artists and makers and artisans and engineers and things like this and yet we don't get seen whereas the people that do get seen are hey look at this thing that you can buy on amazon but i'm selling you for twice as much because i have a pretty face that's yeah i haven't i honestly don't look at the shop videos so i haven't like noticed that but Somehow that doesn't surprise me that that's what's going on. I mean, even Etsy, like a lot of the shops on there are just, they're the same shops that are on Amazon and it's all crap. Exactly. And it's like, how do you compete with, with that when you're making handmade stuff? It It's. We had to change the TikTok. We temporarily, we actually shut it down with the intent of it being permanent. And we brought back our Etsy shop, but we did some like, I now have, I doubled the price of the stickers from $3 to $6 because um, Etsy on average takes 47 to 53% of my income. And I'm like, um, excuse me, I make all of this myself from scratch. You can forget right. that. So I made SpectrumDIY.com into a shop. It was just a website with info. Now it has an actual shop on it. And on Etsy, I put the banner like, hey, SpectrumDIY.com is home of the $3 sticker. We have over 180 designs, whereas like Etsy only has 94 and they're way more expensive and the pictures are don't just like, eh, you know, 
if you want them, you really could pay the higher price or you could support <laughs> the artist directly. That, that's a good idea. I was so I started with the shop on my website, but I wasn't getting people to it. So I was like, well, I'll do Etsy just because it's kind of like being in a mall. People are going to walk by. But um, I do eventually want to just have my own own shop. And the price idea is a good idea. I'll probably borrow that from you because uh, I mean, like, my thing is, is I still have such a large um like we have what 1853 sales on etsy and so what we did i'm so sorry i got like distracted here with this um <laughs> i was looking at etsy actually because we have 1853 sales there's 676 reviews so that's people see our stuff and it says like favorited your item favorited your item and it's it's pretty consistent but it funnels people from there to the website the same way like Instagram and Facebook and um, we're not on X, but we're on TikTok. So we have multiple platforms that we're on all funneling to the website and even still sometimes like, okay, our site this month has not seen maybe nine customers this whole month. Mm -hmm. it, last month oh my god last month was great so it's kind of like carried over a little bit so we're really hoping october will be better <laughs> last month was last month was good for me and this month has been slow as well so i wonder if there's like a seasonality to school. it school is another thing with school being in there's a lot of people who um are younger that buy from older content creators and they're all in school now and even like college is a thing. So like all of my sales originally came from people ranging between like 16 and 25. Well, they're all in either school or college right now. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. oh, okay. That, so October is a better month for makers. November, December, it, believe it or not, from my experience, my shop has seen that February and September are really rough months. I don't know if that reflected in your shop or not, but it feels like February and September are the two hardest months of the year. Yeah, December, December through December through February have been the worst for me. Um, and and then it's kind of the rest of the year. But the it's weird because around I thought <laughs> Christmas would do better and then it was like it didn't. I was just like, all right, I did do a pop-up shop last year around Christmas time. So the fact that Etsy didn't do well was not like a big deal because the pop-up shop did okay. Um, but um, I, I would like to do another pop-up shop, but I had the advantage of doing it where my friend was running the shop. And so I didn't have to deal with the, the social anxiety of going to a shop and trying to talk them into it and blah, blah, blah. And they didn't charge me. And I want to do another one, but I'm going to have to like go be a salesperson and be like, look at my shit, you know? And I just, so I'm not. Funny, dude. <laughs> you know, I get it. it takes me, if I'm being honest, when I make my like TikTok sticker videos where I'm like, what's going on, you guys? I got a new sticker in this. I feel so, I'll be laughing at myself the whole time between the, between the clips. And after the fact, I'm just sitting here like, I'm so ridiculous. This is so <laughs> I get, I feel like when I, when I make my videos or posts or whatever to show the stuff I made, I just feel like a little kid. I'm like, look what I did. It's not even about the sales at that moment. I'm just so excited that I did a thing, you know, and I just want to share it with people. And then later I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta sell that. Right. <laughs> no, I feel like, okay, that's the same thing. I got excited about the, the rug and I did like a reveal where I flipped it around. But then I realized, like, now I kind of have to advertise this thing. Otherwise, <laughs> I've got this carpet in my room. And I made it because I like Nightmare Before Christmas, but I want to sell it because I yeah. want to have room for other things. And instead, it's been, like, cram-packed with I have a bunch of carpets in my way. And I, I, my brain's trying to do all these different things while worrying about, can we eat? Can we have <laughs> Remind me, uh, like, or send me a link if you have made a video showing it or whatever later, um, and I'll share it on uh, 
on X because I I'm like tapped into the horror community there, and I feel like they might that there could be interest there. I can't promise, but I'm I would totally like love to share that. I just love that the pickle Rick one is just so intense. The expression and it it, it and he's staring at you all the time. I mean, you've like hung it up there. It just all the time you've got that look like right at you. <laughs> and I okay, so just so I wouldn't forget, I went ahead and shared the time lapse of the nightmare rug. I don't know if I still have the reveal. No, I I hid the reveal maybe or deleted it. Did I delete it? Well, that works. I have people like uh, to make to make videos. Those are on my on my crafty account. Those are the ones that do the best, or when I'm just making stuff. So, I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm and I'm hoping once I get enough followers, I can do lives. I remember when we did that one live um, where we were hanging out, and that was like like a year and a half ago. Oh, yeah, it was a long time ago, and I was like, oh, I want to do that again. But like the last year, I just haven't had the energy to do to do lives and yeah. I still manage to do at least one live every day but um about a that that time was when my account was still 89 hikari 89 and I found a video from that account yesterday and I posted it to this account cuz the the new one is it seems like it's the oldest account, but it's really not. My very first account was Hikari89, and it got banned because I said I was autistic too many times, and it counted. <laughs> and I was like, hate speech. I'm, I'm literally, I'm actually <laughs> me. So I made a new account, and I, I think I posted like 300 videos to it, and then I got self-conscious about it because I'm like, what am I even doing? This is ridiculous, and I deleted all of them. You, you, uh, you delete, I literally get, get that where I'm like, why am I, do this is silly. And I get the urge to delete it. And then I, I tell myself, I'm going to wait a day and see how I feel before I delete, you know? I still want to, I, st I still want to nuke my account and start over from scratch and see, did I gain my 13,000 people? Cause I'm really that good. Or was it sheer luck? Cause but I'm also terrified to lose, like, because, okay, my coming out video, that's more complicated than just, yay, he accepted me in that moment. But, yeah. you know, not to be ugly, but once you're a narcissist, or if you are a narcissist, you're pretty much, that's, there's no, why are you accepting me? Is it for a gain later on? And so I kind of want to let that video be hidden but keep the positive interaction because there's like 5,000 comments of positivity but at the same time it's like I want to start a brand new account and see what happens if I let people assume that I'm just not a like of what I look like what I sound like I'm just gonna let them assume because the videos I want to produce don't have me in them it's just my content and see how it does because i'm testing a theory next to see if the algorithm is phobic of some kind because i'm trying to figure out why is it that i'm not even reaching my own people just like you're not reaching your own people but it's not just me it's like even my friend casey who's a veteran an army veteran has three million people his videos one of them got like eight thousand, and that's where it stopped yeah. i'm like eight thousand out of three million what had yeah what huh, I'd be excited about 8,000 because I've only got 13,000 people, but at 3 million, that's, that's I, not even a drop in the bucket. It's not like 1%. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend that, that, um, she's got like over 30,000 and she doesn't get any more engagement than I do on mine. And I'm, I'm like, and she, it's crazy. And she posts all the time. She does, she responds to comments and like, you know, in theory, she's doing all the things, but she used to have more engagement and something changed and it just hasn't come back from it. And it's, it's I think uh, this has reached kind of a weird spot because this is I have heard this echoed amongst every maker that I've seen that does videos. Every person I talk to has echoed that their content engagement has plummeted. And it's been since TikTok shop. 
I really think it's the TikTok shop. If if the algorithm, if you are flagged as a seller, maker, whatever, chances are, I bet you it's because TikTok shop is trying to win out. Um, I don't feel like opening a TikTok shop because in my head, I'm like, okay, so you're going to be this, you're basically just an Etsy built into the app. And you're going to be taking money from people who are already struggling anyway. Like, I have a website with a shop that I pay for out of pocket already. Why am I yeah. trying to open yet another shop somewhere else? Like, I don't know. It's it's maddening. So I, I don't know what to say except for we can either persevere or we can start branching out to other platforms and see if one of those take off. Because I know there's Odyssey, which is supposed to be kind of like YouTube rival. Clapper was a very big mistake. I tried to go over to Clapper and it's like, this was bad. This is, this it doesn't is... even, that's not even a good name. It's just. <laughs> yeah, don't. And then, of course, I'm not on X because I refused to join Elon Musk's. Like, it, it, Twitter, I would have joined Twitter. But then Elon Musk happened and I'm just like, never mind. <laughs> But yeah. I'm on Instagram and I made a business Facebook because I stopped being personally on Facebook. Year, I was on that from like 2004 or 2005 or something like that, like all the way to present. About a year and yeah. about two years ago, I think. I have never regretted anything more than losing my pictures on there. That other than that, I'm I don't miss Facebook. I miss my pictures though. I I may I joined a a group uh like 2014 or 15 it's like um people that are really into cat rescues and cats and uh, a lot of them are disabled and um just kind of grumpy foul mouth people and it's a great like i that's why i haven't left facebook but i muted everybody <laughs> except for four people from my friends list because i just didn't want the noise but the group of the cat people, they, they are the primary source of like the support that I get online. They, they help like push the GoFundMe. They actually like, sometimes they send me art supplies. It's amazing. And I, I am, you know, cause I kept being, I want to delete Facebook. I want to delete Facebook, but like, I'm so glad that I've stuck around for that. I just literally had to control what my feed looked like because there's just so much like unnecessary negativity and noise and yeah. And, but I'm like that with everything. I don't, I don't have notifications on. I don't like, yeah. I have selectively cherry picked my feed on a lot of things, but I feel like maybe it's because my, okay, mentally I'm in, in a, in kind of a rut where I can't find the motivation to keep being that positive vibe because I really am dealing with a lot of stress. And so I'm almost kind of glad I don't have to deal with the Facebook feed because it, but, but at the same time, maybe that'd be a distraction. You never know. Like it could be a yeah. nice station for a little while. Or maybe, maybe an untapped resource or I don't, I don't, that's like, I ended up making, you know, I made the Twitter slash X account specifically as a potential resource, a place to post my stuff. Um, and honestly, I get like a lot of reposts and a lot of support from people there, um, because I got pulled into the horror community and they're all really, really nice and stuff. Um, and I did not expect that. I was not expecting to find people in a place that I have such a negative like association with. Cause I quit Twitter in 2013 because it was such a cesspool of like echo chamber bullshit. And, um, yeah. I just, and then I got pulled into this community and I was like, well, I just came here to like show off my wares but i guess i'm making friends now okay like you know Maybe but that's I, how tiktok was for me too so that, you, you know if you're trying to pitch x to me that that'd be a good way to get me to join because i'm over here like maybe i should join x and just, <laughs> hey, i could buy my check mark so i could get verified on tiktok <laughs> <laughs> is that wait you get verified in tiktok by getting a check mark on X or did well, I? No, it's more like, okay, um, with TikTok, verification to get a check mark is you have to be notor no have some type of notoriety, like um, either published by some uppity thing. I've, 
there's some stipulations to it. It's like post four sources of you being published somewhere. And so that's kind of, I feel like that's very gate kept. Yeah. Considering like the only thing verification does is put a check mark next to your name. Um, and it pushes your content out, but it doesn't make you any less likely to have your content suppressed or somebody mass reported and stuff like that. So I don't know really what you get out of it, except for that you have a blue check mark. I've, I've, I don't understand that exactly because. Like how many people that are following are going to care about the sources of verification? Like they're, yeah. I don't think they're going to. Like, and okay. So that Casey Van Arsdale is not, verified yet he has more following than somebody that left a comment on my page that's only got like 150,000 people and they're verified and their content doesn't get seen as much so it's like okay well I can look at that and say okay well having verification doesn't get you seen more it just puts a blue check mark there like I've that's the other thing like I, I was interested in it because it's like oh that'd be kind of neat but then when I looked into like getting it and what does it do, it's like, what's the even point? Like I could just yeah. Photoshop that in. <laughs> <laughs> right. on. It's a blue check. I am a human. Okay. Right. But tune in next week for part two of my conversation with Hikari. I hope you have a great weekend.